Hello, Michael here with another How Do I Render tutorial. Today we're going to be having a look at how to render a neon sign using RenderMan and also Nuke. You can use one or the other or both. Um, so I'll show you how to render all, it all up using those. So the first thing we're going to do is create some text for our neon sign in Maya here. We're just going to go create type. I'm just going to set that to center and I'm going to type in neon in caps doesn't have to be caps, can be whatever you want. And I've just got a little neon uh, font here that I've used. And what we're going to do is, if we're happy with that, we're going to go to modify, convert to convert type to curves. Now the reason we want to do that is because you'll see we've got in gone faces here, and that's going to be no good for render man to render up. So we'll delete that type, and now we've got this curve. Now this curve we can uh, convert into polygons very easily. So what we'll do here is we will go curves and surfaces. We're going to create a little circle. I'm just going to move it around the beginning of the end there. Hold uh, with it selected, hold shift and select the end. Then I'm going to go to surfaces and extrude and you'll see you get a mess. Um, it's easy to fix. You just go to component pivot there and fixed path there. And now it looks a little bit chubby. So we're gonna select our circle and just scale it down until we're happy with the width. Um, after we convert it to polygons, we can still actually adjust this width. So don't worry too much about it. Also, you'll notice that um, it is inverted. It's got inverted normals. We'll fix that shortly as well. Um, so if we're happy with that, we will select the NURB surface and we will or extruded surface and we'll go to modify convert uh, nerves to polygons and then we can hide that and select that um, so you'll see it is actually slightly thinner um, than the previous version you can smooth smooth it as well with three and obviously it gets even thinner so that's why it's good to hold on to that circle because then you can still scale it back up again with it selected, we can go to surface, uh, sorry, we can go to mesh display and reverse and that will give us the surface normals facing the camera rather than facing inside. So then it is just a matter of rinse and repeat. Um, you will have to create a new circle every time you do this. So you can just dilute, delete, uh, sorry, you can just duplicate the one that you have and then just move it on down next to the E. Same thing, shift and um, extrude. I'm just going to go through and uh, do this with all of the letters there and um, I'll be back in a moment. Okay, so you can see I've finished that up there. I also did a little bit of extra editing and just created another curve uh, just to connect up those two ends there very quickly. Um, I haven't gone in and touched up the um, topology or anything like that. It's pretty much just straight out of the conversion. Um, and obviously you can do this with any font and I haven't actually really connected those. I've just kind of lined them up because I've only got a limited amount of time. So we're going to move on from here. So the first thing we're going to want to do is turn this into a light, a mesh light to be specific. So we'll select it and we'll go to uh, the RenderMan tab and we'll select mesh light and then we'll get a mesh light attached to it. And you can see that there I've already grouped all those polygons together. And um, what I'll do is I'll add in a surface for it to sit on. And then we'll just do a quick IPR and we can see what it renders up looking like. Okay, so you can see that we've got the light working uh, in the scene. Now something to note about mesh lights is that they are very time consuming with render. So they will be noisy, so you're going to have to end up rendering at a higher sample rate most of the time to reduce noise. Obviously you can um, still use your denoise function as well. To denoise them, we will just in the RenderMan AOVs, go to the Beauty tab and just have denoise selected. I already had it selected there. Now what can we do to make this look more like a neon sign? Something you'll notice about neon signs often when they're used in film is that they are illuminating the atmosphere around them. So at the moment there is no atmosphere in the scene so there's nothing for it to illuminate so you don't get that glow around the outside of the sign. So if you've done the atmosphere tutorial which I put up a couple of weeks ago um, you'll already know how to do this but for those of you who have not 
basically we're going to create a cube uh, I'm just going to change the drawing overrides so I don't have to see it um, and then you can just size this to be however big you want just so it en encompasses the entire neon thing beware if you are clipping the cube with the camera the atmosphere won't work so make sure you scale it accordingly and then we're going to select the cube and we're going to go to the render man tab again and create a pixar volume you can right click on that to assign or just click on it so now when we render it you'll see that you can't see anything and that's because our volume is far too dense so we'll just go back into the attribute editor for that uh, we'll just find the where is that it's under that one volume and then we just want to reduce the density to say 0.15 and so we can just barely see it now so then we'll select our mesh light and we'll just increase the intensity intensity to something like a hundred and now I'll turn denoising off so you can see so you can, as you can see a lot of fireflies a lot of noise um, but it is rendering correctly I'm just going to increase the exposure to one so it's a little bit brighter I might go 200 all right now I'm going to enable the temperature and I'm going to make this sign blue so I'll give it a temperature of 10,000 which is just going to add a little bit of blue to it and now I'm going to change the color to also be blue and I might just back off that atmosphere a little bit further Depending on how far you want to see through it will depend on how much density you want in your atmosphere. So as you can see, it's sort of starting to work like I want. The Basically what I'm looking for with this is I want the sign to generally appear close to white and I want the atmosphere to be uh, the blue color. Um, so I might even just go back in and if it change that uh, intensity a little bit. So I'm just adjusting the saturation here to get it to look as close to sort of a light blue, close to white. All right, so that's pretty much what I'm looking for here. Um, and you can see that with the denoiser, it's a little bit cleaner, obviously. Now I'm just going to add some extra geometry into the scene so we can sort of uh, tell how deep um, this image is going. And also for the sake of Z depth, uh, when we get to that in a moment, which I'll explain, um, I'm just going to make it so you can't see the uh, background in the render. Okay, so um, all I've done here is I've just given it a, a sort of studio curve background and I've just increased the scale of the atmosphere box. Should remain, rename that. Um, and as you obviously increase the scale, if it's bringing it closer to the camera, it's going to increase the overall density or sort of amount of atmosphere that's occurring between the camera and the neon sign. So you may need to adjust your density. Um, I'm going to leave mine as is. And I'm just going to put in a couple of random bits of primitives um, just so we can sort of see how the atmosphere is working uh, in Nuke as well as with this. And for the sake of rendering time, actually you give, give everything a render man shader. And then we can just IPR that. All right, so you can see how dense that is because the background objects are invisible basically to the camera. Um, whereas if I intersect the box and turn off, essentially turning off the, there you go. They're actually being illuminated by the mesh light, but um, yeah, so what I can do, I just go back into the at my box and just, or just, uh, yeah, go into the at my box and just change the volume density again. So I have to back it up quite a lot for it to be visible. I've actually set it down to 0 0.001, which is as low as it actually goes, but that works. So I can keep it like this. You're not quite getting the glow that you want, but if you want to be able to see these background obvious objects, obviously you're going to need to reduce that atmosphere. Uh, density. Now if we're using Nuke this isn't going to be as big a problem because we're going to be able to add the sort of atmospheric effect in post so we'll have a little bit more control over our background and um, objects as well. So uh, what we'll do is I'm just going to um, I'm going to leave that as is. 
So let's pretend we're happy with that and that's our final render. Just set up your shop, render it out, no problem. But um, if we want to do this with a little bit more control over our final render, we can actually do a little bit more in Nuke to get a bit of extra control and we can still get that um, volume overall affecting the density as it goes towards the background. And I've done this in a couple of other tutorials, but I'll show it again here. So I'm going to set my shot up and just sort of eyeball it into place. Now for this, I do not need the Atmo box, so we'll turn that off. Okay, and if you're happy with that, what we'll do is we'll do a batch render. And we need to do just one small addition to our batch render. So um, with your beauty channel selected, we just need to add a Z channel to it. So we're just going to select Z, select beauty, and select the insert button. And that's going to give it the Z channel in there. And we're going to use this for our atmosphere in Nuke, or our volume in Nuke actually and we do need to do one more thing we just need to create a render layer um, with just the sign in it so we're going to create that this is going to be called sign and we're going to create a collection neon sign and we're just going to add in all those polygons. I'll add in the light just so you can see it in Nuke a little bit easier. You don't actually need the light. Um, we're basically going to be running this. Uh, you can just run it off the alpha so it'd be a little bit quicker to render but because this is at such a low sample setting it doesn't actually matter for me. Um, so I'm going to pause the recording. Basically what I'm doing here is I'm going to go up to Render Man and Batch Render and then I'll be back in a minute. Okay, uh, we've finished our renders there with a glorious time of 1 minute and 46 seconds. So we're just going to jump into Nuke now. Okay, now I'm just going to set my scene to have the same dimensions as my render, which is 540, so, uh, 540p, so it's 960 by 540, which is 540p. And I'm just going to bring in my renders. So we're just going to bring in all these. This is the filtered and non-filtered versions. So as you can see there, so that one there on the right is our filtered version, which we'll be using primarily. And then we've got a filtered and non-filtered version of this, which really make no difference. So it doesn't really matter if you have denoise on that layer, but you will um, unless you do it as an LPA, but don't worry about that. So what we want to do here is create, um, we're going to create a shuffle node. Actually, I'm going to duplicate that read so I can use it again in a minute. And I'm going to create a grade. And with the shuffle, we're just going to grab depth. And I'm just going to set that to 1. And I'm going to set the white point, basically, so I can see the Z depth. So uh, we'll see 50, 150. Might be quite high. Just so I can actually see what's going on here. Um, and the white the whitest part will be basically where the atmosphere is the thickest so sort of just bear that in mind probably 200 will do the trick then I create a merge node and we are going to also create a constant and the constant is just going to color our atmosphere so we're going to uh, create a color for that and it is going to be blue about that blue uh, just basing it sort of off what that looks like and we're going to set that to multiply so now that atmosphere is blue and then we're going to create another merge node and our B is going to be our neon and our A is going to be our atmosphere and this is just going to be over so if I delete all that just looking through the merge node here you can see that it creates a atmosphere and you can control this with the mix and bring in as much or as little as you want so basically all it's doing is it's multiplying this color constant times the z depth so the further it gets away the more uh, density or the, the more opaque it's going to be now we're not getting that atmosphere like we were in our render man render um, 
like in this one where you could see it sort of glowing in the atmosphere. So what we're going to do is use our neon sign, uh, that render layer, and we're going to just create a blur node, another merge, um, and that's B, and it's going to be with a noise node. I'll show you what the noise node's going to do in a minute, but basically we just want to set that to multiply. And then another merge node. Lots of merge nodes. Now with our blur, we're just going to increase the blur, and as you can see, it starts to create a sort of amount of something that we could construe as atmosphere in this, certain, uh, in this circumstance. And we control that with the merge. Now what I've found is in the blur node it's good to use quadratic, it just gives you a bit of a softer fall off, so if I look at the edge there with Gaussian, um, you can see the difference, it's like a quite a softer fall off there. And then you can obviously mix there as well. Um, unfortunately with this render I didn't realise what was going to happen, this value here being quite close to the illumination from the sign is affecting our glow, so if I were to set this up again I'd actually push these objects away so I didn't get this um, sort of blown out thing happening in the middle there because as you increase that obviously it's affecting it quite a lot so um, yeah but then you can just balance it out with your z-depth decide how much you need in there to make it look like it's part of the atmosphere somewhere around 0.75 looks to be the trick the noise so basically what the noise is doing, um, so you've got a consistent sort of um, edge around there, if we use the noise, I'll just put it up to like half, and then you can just sort of, if you reduce it obviously it's going to become sort of very jaggy, um, which you may want, um, but I'm just going to adjust the x, y to be to create just a little bit of variation, just so it's not so um, obvious the whole way around. And then yeah, you can see that that has a slightly more interesting effect than if it's just straight off. Of course you may not want it, you don't have to use it, um, I just look for a little bit of variety where I can get it um, with most of my renders. But yeah, that's fairly blown out, I'd probably back things off a little bit more. I did one earlier, I'll show you this one here. Um, which is a little bit, you know, more subtle, which is usually where I fall with things. But as you can see with the background there, it doesn't work so well when you've got this multiplication time uh, over this white background. Um, the value shift is not very pretty. So if you are going to have this render, just bear that in mind. If you've got a ba blank background or if you do this on a render layer where the background is visible, you might run into a situation where that might not be what you're after, though if you did render it in a render layer without any other background then you might actually end up with a bit more control, so sort of depends what you're after as well, um, it may work in your favour or not. Um, but yeah, so we've got our incredibly neon scene here, um, and that is pretty much all there is to it. If you liked the tutorial make sure you click the like button so other people can find it on YouTube and if you haven't already make sure you subscribe as I do tutorials just like this every week for all sorts of CG products out there. Uh, if you'd like to check out more of my work check out the link in the description to my Instagram um, and soon to be art station. That's it for this one though, thank you very much for watching and happy rendering.